Sometimes we need to animate with constraint. For example, like this judo is trying to throw this person to the ground holding his shirt. So let's take a look at how we are going to do this. First, load in your reference and your two characters. Okay, then you will start to wonder which pose should I do first. Very simple. The first one is of course the very first pose starting at zero. Then look out for your main key pose. What is your main key pose? Usually I will look out for key poses of the contact pose or the one that is most extreme. In this case, look at your white guy. Okay, he was being pushed to the back. So I'll look out for the place where he reaches the most back, the extreme left, where he touched the extreme left. So he's going to the left some more. Left, left, left. Okay, over here, then it start to push to the right. So I will do it around here, 11. I do one key pose. So the main key from zero, then to 11. Okay, maybe I do a simple key pose first. This guy, select all. Okay, zero. First key pose, 11. Second key pose. Okay, next, I will look at the black girl. Okay, when she lift up her leg, because this reference doesn't show it. So when she lift up her leg, it should be around this pose, 15. Okay, so this is another main key pose. Then it start to look at this leg. Okay, when you start to touch the ground, this is the first frame you touch the ground. That's the contact point. Okay, I will do another key pose here. Okay, then this white guy will touch the ground here. It's another main key poses. Okay, so we'll do it over here. And then it just bounce and then go to the end. Okay, so in this very short 42 frame, we will have five main key poses. One, two, three, four, five. So once you identify your main key poses, then you can start to block out your animation. Okay, then you have to decide whether you want to use IK hand or FK hand. In this case, the guy I will be using IK because the guy will be grabbing her shirt. Okay, for the girl, I think we better use the IK hand also because both are grabbing the shirt. Okay, so we have to change it to IK. Okay, now when we look at the reference, you can see that the guy hand is holding on to her elbow all the way. So we need to think of some way that when the elbow, when her elbow moves, this hand will follow along. Okay, so we need to create a constraint to stick to that elbow. We need to put a locator in her elbow. So we have to unclick this reference so that we can click on the skin itself. So select one of the faces and then go to rigging and constraint. There's a revert over here. So click on it, it will create a pin output for you. So you might want to rename this one to anything that you can recognize. Okay, girl elbow. So when you move her hand, okay, look at this locator, it will follow along. So this is the one where we want to constrain the hand to. Okay, so we want to constrain this hand to the elbow. But we don't use this controller to constrain because we still want the value here to editable. Okay, we still want to edit this value. So what we can do is click the elbow and press F. We will go to our outliner. We will go one box above it. So this value, we can afford to touch it. Okay, so we will select the locator. We will constrain this group itself. Okay, constrain parent. Make sure the maintain offset is on and click apply. So whether it works or not, you can test it out. Okay, so when you move back and down, the hand will follow. 
so it's working so now we can use this keyframe instead to move around okay the red color is still on and then you can animate this also this is a bit of rigging so understand the concept okay your parent should be in the group itself okay, under this group whenever you are using other rig so see whether you can use it the group above it okay same for her this hand you can see it's catching on to his shirt okay so we might want to constrain that also okay for this guy we will use the elbow instead of the rivet because it's very close to his shirt okay same thing go to the controller press f we will use this group instead constrain to this group so first we click the master which is this controller then we will constrain the group itself parent constraint with the maintain offset on and press add okay then you can test it out so both the elbow and the hand is working now okay so we're done with this hand for the other hand we cannot see but i guess it's about the same see they are both holding on to each other shirt okay to keep it simple we just make their hand hold, hold on to each other let's do the fish shape first okay so the girl will be outside the guy will be inside so the main controller is this one so we want to control this instead we will use this jack group okay, first click on her controller second on the group itself constraint parent with the maintain offset on and add then we can test it out okay now it's working okay so once it's working we need to create a camera view get the basic shape first okay once we get the basic shape we need to create a camera view so we can do the staging 12 principle of animation that's a staging so we create a new camera we'll call this camera main we need to change our resolution to hd then we'll split our screen we'll use this screen as our main okay, we'll show none for this one okay if you turn around you can't see your reference right okay there's a one trick you can use is to create another camera name this camera as your reference cam okay then in your reference cam you want to zoom in okay, to your reference once you got it you can use tear off copy so you have a additional reference here if you have two screen you can put the this reference to another screen okay if you don't have it then you can put it at the side something like this make it smaller okay you can zoom it in put it at the side so now you have your reference over here if you don't want to see your reference here you can click alternate for hide it okay, if you want you can create a plate show the ground so it will look a bit nicer create a layer and reference it so we don't click accidentally we click the mesh now we need to use our main cam to match this as close as possible so we will do continue with our first pose so this camera when you are done remember to lock it first okay if you want to pan around you can press this one 2d pan zoom once you are in 2d pan zoom you can actually move it around by pressing the button above enter press this button above and the hold the button there and then you can move it as normal when you want to go back to your original view you can just off this 2d pen zoom okay so let's get this guy correct first The light causes the shading to look a bit plain so i would like to switch on the lighting and create a simple directional light then switch on everything first then you can scale up this light in this directional light you can rotate it okay until it somehow have a bit of shading okay it's better than just now okay you can even duplicate it ctrl d to duplicate it and this one you change it to the back to do the rim light the lighting looks a bit nicer okay except for the floor maybe we'll create another shading 
Okay, once it's done, the lighting looks a bit better. We can see some of the overlapping issue. Okay, we can try to fix this area. Okay, once we are done with the basic setup, we need to check a few things. First is the silhouette. Okay, if you're going to switch off the light okay, without the floor, you have to know that these two guys is holding on to each other and fighting. Okay, we need to get this hand shape a bit better. Okay, so we have to think about how we want to do that. Okay, once we are satisfied, you can switch on back the light. The next thing you should do is make sure your character is balanced. So for example, this guy, okay, the center of gravity is here. So he might want to fall down over here. You have to balance this character either by moving the foot okay, towards the center of gravity and make sure the character doesn't feel like he's falling down. Okay, same for the girl. Girl look like she's falling down this side falling down okay because it's too slanted and the only supporting leg is this right so we need to do something about it okay we can try to move this leg instead okay just make sure both of them top view side view okay front back is looking good okay make sure you get the curve the arc correct Okay, this is very important for the first post. You can see I spent quite some time for the first post. Because once you get the first post correct, you can actually copy all the poses over. Okay, so now we have get our first post done. We will move on to the second post. I'm still editing the second part. It will be out in a few days time. So make sure you subscribe and turn on your notification. Hope my tutorial helps and see you next time. Happy animating.